I'm Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop, and I have had the pleasure of spending the last few days with Lori Holt, and we just wanted to share with you all of the notions that she uses when she quilts. So, Lori, let's get started. One of the things that I noticed you used first was your RFL thread, and you always use white. Tell me about why you use RFL and white. And Well, I always use white because I usually have white in my quilts at one point. So, But I like RFL. I've been using it ever since it came out because it's a strong thread but it's finer and so I can get more on my bobbin so I don't have to wind my bobbin as often and it doesn't produce as much lint and mm -hmm. so I don't have to clean my machine as often and it won't jam up. So yeah and I, I think it. I think these are filled we could do some cute are filled colors in Lori's fabrics. Hint hint Alex. That would be fun. Yep. So also I noticed you use these two products which I also use the Clover Theme Ripper and Stiletto. So tell me more about these. I do. I just find that the Clover one is nice and sharp and it fits in my hand very nice. And the Stiletto I use when I can't get my finger under the yeah under the uh, sewing machine when I want to when I'm doing like triangle ends or something and it twists out. So I always use the Stiletto at that point. Okay. And then these two feet, we've used these the last two days also. So tell me more about your walking foot first. Okay. I use a walking foot whenever I'm doing several layers of fabric together at the same time. So if I'm machine quilting, then definitely I'll use my wall, my walking foot. But if I am sewing on binding, because there are several layers of fabric, then I will use this. And what a walking foot does is it uh, feeds your feed dogs underneath the machine at the same speed as the feed dogs on top of the machine so your layers won't shift and they go faster smoother that's right okay and this foot this is my number 20 uh, foot that fits on my Bernina and I love it and I always sew with it because it's an open toed and that means that I can see my needle right when it goes into the fabric so I can always see exactly where I'm sewing yeah and I noticed when you use the open toe instead of a quarter inch foot because you use the angler too. Right. I don't ever use a quarter inch foot because I don't need to. I have it marked on the base of my machine mm -hmm. and how I mark it is through this angler. So I have my quarter inch seam on one side and I, it also has a line that lines up with the needle on my machine so that when I'm doing easy corner triangles I don't have to mark my squares ever I just use this. Okay. And then for scissors, I noticed when we were piecing stuff, you really use three types of scissors. So tell me about the three types that you use. Well, I always have paper scissors in my studio just because when I have to cut out a pattern or something like that, I don't want to ever use my sewing scissors yep. for that. So I've had my paper scissors and then I use nice, big, sharp scissors. These happen to be gingers and I really like them. They stay sharp and they cut through the fabric like butter. And great. then I use these small embroidery scissors, and I really like a sharp point to them. And I use these for so many things, but I always have a small pair next to my machine where I clip my thread. Mm -hmm. always have it for when I'm turning things inside out and I need to clip uh, for embroidery, for all these little things when I have to clip inner curves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just you have more control over a small pair than a large pair sometimes. And tell me about your iron. I think what you do with your iron is very unique, and I'd love to know, learn more about your iron. Well, I use vintage irons. I have a collection, but that's all I've ever used. I love vintage irons because they're heavy, mm -hmm. and they're hot, and they have a nice point. And so I can press my quilt blocks very flat. Okay. And tell me about the rotary cutter you use. This one that I'm using right now I love because when you cut, when you stop cutting, it closes automatically mm -hmm. so the blade is never exposed and if you can ask any of my students I'm always like the rotary cutter police I don't like anybody like that leaves their blade open so this one is what I have right now it's the fonts and porter and I really like it and this might be one of the cutest things in your studio that I just love and I think I'm going to incorporate this idea into what I do when I piece so tell me more about what you're doing here well these are just as you know I'm all about vintage and I have lots of vintage things in my studio and I usually use them instead of just use them to decorate. But when I'm cutting fabric, I've just done this for years, and these are vintage muffin tins, and I'll just spray them different colors because I like color. And I use them when I cut fabric and I'm sorting. So like I'll put my hexagons in here, or my handwork, or things like that, or just my little squares that I've cut. If I know I need 12 of this color, then I'll put them there. Or if I'm cutting out of a strip of fabric, then it helps me with my math. I just like put 10 or 12 in each one and then I know at the end how many I've got so I don't have to keep recounting or I've lost count or I get interrupted 
with a phone call or something and I've forgotten count. So I just use these. I can stack them on top of each other until the blocks are all cut. And then when they're ready, then I put them on my design board. Right, and you kind of use the same methodology where... I do, but this, this time now I would lay the pieces out on the design board the way I'm going to sew the block together. Mm -hmm. And then I can lay them out and I can... This, I have six here, so I could cut six blocks at a time, different blocks. I use these for my farmer's wife, which is why I made these mini design boards. And then I can have the blocks cut. I can stack them on top of each other and they won't shift or anything. And I just put them by my machine. And then when I have a few minutes, I can just sew a block together. Yeah, those are those when the are stack's just great. gone, then I cut six more. Six more. And this is a great new I circle mat. I love this. Thins. Yes. Ever since I've had my rulers out, then uh, this is new. And so I bought this and I've loved it. It's one of the best things that I've been using lately. And so with small rulers, then you can rotary cut it. And when they have all different angles, you just you know, I can I can cut turn it for this side, turn it for this side, turn it for that side. Yeah, and this I don't is, have to shift my pieces around. And it's by Busy Patchwork. And the great thing that I like about this one is it's not too large. Sometimes when they're really large, when you when you turn it, you have to cut on the other side of the table. So this one I, I really right. do like. Yeah, I love this small one. And for the, large, for the large rulers, I just use my mat. But then I have these um, stickets by Riley Blake that I put on the back of my rulers. They're also produced by Riley Blake. And I put those on the back and then I put them on the fabric as I cut so that it doesn't shift around. And it just kind of helps. It sticks to the fabric, but it doesn't leave a residue. So you can just peel it off. Right. And you can use them over and over again. Yeah. And like Lori said, she's got three new ruler sets out. The Hexi Half Rulers, Circle Rulers, and Thimble Rulers. Check out our videos on how to make quilts with them. They're, they're really great. They're great to use with pre-cuts. And also I noticed when you were piecing, you used lots of rulers, but this is just an example of two of them. I like to have, this is the largest ruler, the longest ruler that I have, and I love it because when I'm cutting borders or long strips, I use this quite a bit, or I'm cutting, you know, off the bolt or something like that. You need a long ruler, so. And this one's eight and a half by 24, and it's by Creative Grids. And then this one I love. It's a small three and a half inch square. And it's perfect for after you've cut strips of fabric, then you can just, you know, cut so your smaller cool. pieces out of it. So you don't have a great big ruler that you're trying to cut mm -hmm. little pieces out of. So I use that quite a bit. And tell me about this freezer paper. because I really like the size of it. I do too. I use freezer paper a lot. And you can just use freezer paper from your grocery store, but it comes wide and on big rolls. And sometimes you need pieces that large. But most of the time I just need, well, eight and a half by 11, which is what this is. They're nice. They're compact. But I use it a lot for applique, but I also use freezer paper for, you know, like tracing any mm -hmm. patterns on. I'll, I'll trace the pattern right off of the pattern instead of cutting it out. I'll trace it onto my freezer paper. And then instead of pinning the pattern onto a piece of fabric, I'll iron my freezer paper onto fabric and cut around cut it. Around. And then I can just peel my freezer paper off and use it again. Use that shape again if I need to. Yeah, and I think this is much better than what you get at the grocery store since that is so bulky and you've got to have such a big space to store it. This is just great to store. It's nice for when you go on retreats to, to pack. And then this, Lori's got a great collection of pin cushions. And this I is do my, like my pin cushions. My favorite one. <laughs> Tell me about your pins because there is these are a little bit different than... Well, I get these pins at Joann's. I'm sure you could probably get them at some other places, but I just pick them up at Joann's. I like these because they're long mm -hmm. and they're sharp. And so they're just easy to grasp. I first bought them when I was teaching my daughter Cassie to sew because I thought it would be easier for her to handle. Mm -hmm. And I found out that they were easier for me to handle as well. So I've continued using them. And this is a product. Tell me about this product because I'm pretty unfamiliar with the with this product. Well, I don't use steam in my iron okay. because I feel that it shrinks my fabric. And so because I use a really hot iron. And so sometimes I do need a little bit of starch, uh, something to smooth it out. And so I use the best press. I like it because it's just a really light starch and I love all of the scents. So yeah. is it available in more than one scent? It is. Okay. Yeah. And then one thing that I just think is so great and original about Lori is she doesn't design anything on the computer. And so tell me about this. I don't design anything on the computer. I do everything by hand. I draw everything. I always have a mechanical pencil because the lead never goes dull. I always have a nice eraser and I always have graph paper because that's how I draw out my quilts and my blocks and that's 
how I design. Yeah, and she's got lots of sizes in her studio so she can design small quilts, large quilts. So thank you, Lori, for showing us all your notions. I think they're great. And have a quilty, quilty kind of day. day.